We have an amazing lesson today. I'm really excited to share with you a connection between phi and pi. And in a lot of maths textbooks, this is like from Euler's time, hundreds of years ago, mathematicians knew and wrote down an equation called six on five, which if you doubled six on five, that's 12 on 10. So that's 1.2. 1.2 times phi squared equals approximately pi. And pi is a circle diameter relationship. So this is a very famous equation. And the reason why I'm introducing you this concept of an equation is so that not to get frightened by it, but if we can translate number into art, we're going to turn this equation into a picture. So obviously we've got a relationship between six and five. So I'm going to start off with a hexagon here. So in the circle, partitioned into six, which is the key to creating the seed of life, flower of life. Um, we know, for example, like a cube, if you tilt it around and look at that point, you'll see the shadow of a hexagon. So this is about the harmonics of the cube containing the universal codes. And because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, this five part of the equation means we're going to travel from, what's the distance from here that's one, Actually, I might even write that in, just so you can see. So we're going to call that one. We're going to call this bit two, three, four, and five. We want to get to this point here. I'm going to put a big mark there. We're not interested in the six on six, because that's one. So, so the relationship of that distance, one plus two plus three, four, five, that divided by six is going to give us pi. So... This is really interesting because um, this goes back to Egyptian knowledge. So to understand what's going on, we're going to, if we did start from here, I'll put an arrow here. If we started from here and called that zero, that's our zenith point, we're going to make the circumference of this circle. We could make it one unit, but what we're going to do is we're going to take that equation called pi and we're going to say that the circumference of this circle as it goes right around all the way around equals pi. And you know that pi, there's a traditional value called 3.141, but we're going, it doesn't matter, we're going to use the true value of pi because we know that pi must be based on phi. So just for this ex expression here, we're going to say that the arc length, the arc length here of one sixth of the circle. So we know that that's the full length. So that full length is pi, 3.144. But we're going to divide it by six so that I can calculate this distance here. So this bit here is one sixth of pi. So, um, so we want to, so when you get, if you get your calculator and go three, 3.144 divided by six, you get a value called point five two four, and when you put three little dots after it, it means the decimal goes forever. So this distance from here to there is point five two four. Now that that's a very important number because th this is why I've drawn an Egyptian priest here or a figure, is because they measured everything. They measured a thing called the cubit. So they took the distance from the elbow to the fingertip. So from the elbow here to the fingertip there, they divided this, they called that one cubit. So that distance here is called one cubit. And because it's the measurement of the arm, and that, that's called anthropic. Anthropic means that we're using human parts to create measurement. So this ancient Egyptian hieroglyph of, an, of a hand, elbow, fingers is called the cubit. And it was very sacred to the temple building. So a cubit was 0.524. That's how long uh, a cubit is. And um, so the, the, the amazing thing is that what you're going to see is that when we take this measurement of the cubit, like 0.524 again, 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 we're going to multiply this cubit distance here. Uh, actually, before I do that, I just wanted to show you they divided this section here into seven parts. So one, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six. And this was the seventh part. The seventh part was called a palm. So when you put the four fingers together here, 
that was the secret to creating four lots of seven. So if this is one part based on four digits, each one of these is four digits. So four lots of seven gives us 28 parts, which relates to the moon. They related this to the ast astronomy of the time. So this was very sacred to the Egyptian temple building based on the palm and the cubit. So now we know that 0.524, they made a rod, just like a normal ruler. Let's just say this was, if that was a meter long, 0.5 is about half. So they used what they called a cubit rod, which was, and they divided up into 28 little segments, just like we have 30 inches in a, say, foot. Um, they have 28 parts. Okay, so this is the key. Knowing the cubit, we want to add the distance one, two, three, four, five, because that's the equation, six on five. But I want five, six, not six on five. So what we need to do is we have to rearrange this equation so that, see how we've got six on five times five squared equals pi. What we want, we only want this bit. We only want phi here. So we have to get rid of the six on five. So in mathematics, if I want to cancel out six on five, so here's my six on five. If I multiply this and flip the fraction this way, if I multiply six on five by five on six, you know that that's going to equal one. So we've cancelled out the six on five. It's still five squared, so the five squared remains. But in mathematics, when we do algebra, whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other side. So if I multiply six on five, if I multiply by five on six on this side, I have to multiply this side. This pi over here, this pi, has to be multiplied by 5 on 6. So what happens is that these all cancel out. So now we have an expression, an algebraic expression, where pi, phi squared equals phi pi on 6. So that means we want 5, 6 of the circle. Because pi is the circle... So instead of 6 on 5, I've done it cleverly now so that we only want 5, 6 of the circles. So let's do it again. 1, that's 0.524 plus another, plus another, plus another, plus another, means we multiply 5 by the cubit. So this distance here, 3.144 divided by 6, this section here was 0.524. I multiply that by 5, and when you get your calculator and look at it, it's 2.62 um distance that's um that's a really important bit because 2.62 is phi squared so see here up in the title we've got phi squared equals 2.618 2.618 but in mathematics we want to round that off so if i wanted to round that off to two decimals that eight is more than five so that eight makes the one it becomes a two so this is really two point six two rounded off to two decimals because these dots are saying it goes forever with decimals so we've rounded off phi squared as 2.62 so we've just calculated that at this point here five six of the circle we have the cubit and we also have down here if you look here phi squared is kepler's triangle so this was the relationship here when we have a pyramid when we have a pyramid, the center point to the midpoint of the edge is one, and the slope height is one is one point six one eight. So this slope height here is phi. But when we do Pythagoras' theorem, that squared plus that squared equals phi squared. So phi squared is in the pyramid harmonics, and it's also in the relationship of the hexagon to pi and to phi. So I just wanted to let you know that this is the harmonics of the circle, the cube of space containing all the codes of creation. And this is ancient knowledge being revealed in the most pictorial and graphic way so that anyone can appreciate that when mathematicians are talking about fundamental equations that govern our reality, that we can understand it's just all related to the mathematics of flowers. Thank you.